Well, hello everybody in the Java EE class. Uh, this is for the weekday session, and uh, this is your final exam review because I will not be in class this coming up Wednesday, which is the 18th. And uh, please do remember that our final exam is scheduled for Wednesday the 25th. Um, if you don't like that day, you can take it on Monday the 23rd if you'd like. Uh, but what you're looking at is the final exam review sheet, and this sheet um, actually comes from a bhecker.com website, and it is right here. It's the Spring 2012 Final Exam Review. After I record this video, I'm going to stick this video as another link underneath it, um, so you can uh, use this. Uh, you can just go to bhecker.com, go into the Java EE course, and you'll find this uh, video link. And uh, so what's on the exam? The exam is 15 multiple choice questions. And uh, some of the questions actually are sort of true and false as well. So it's not really exactly all multiple choice. Um, there are some circle all that apply, circle ones that apply, circle two. Um, so you really have to read the questions carefully. Um, of the 15 questions, uh, five of them are worth two points. Uh, so the entire exam has a total score of 20 points uh, to be applied towards your grade. And uh, if we go into the syllabus and I take a look at this real quick here, I can see that uh, the final exam for this particular course is 20%. Uh, so it's 20%. Uh, so it's it's about uh, 15 questions, five of them worth two points. You don't know which ones are worth two points, though. Uh, they all say, uh, actually, an example on the top, it says each question is worth uh, two points. But in any case, uh, that's what the exam is uh, comprising of. So uh, what do you need to know? Basic client server technologies, uh, basic client server technologies, uh, what are distributed systems, what's the internet, uh, what is the internet made out of, uh, you know, in terms of its components, what is meant by enterprise and web applications, what is meant by the concept of middleware, what are some challenges uh, to the client server technologies, uh, reviewing client server security and some challenges with it, uh, reviewing the techniques for handling network failures, reviewing the overall concepts of JDBC, RMI, EE. It's uh, very comprehensive. It covers the entire course. Also review the concept of TCP, IP, UDP, and IP, and all the associated lectures th that we went through. If you're looking for the lectures, the lectures are uh, actually here are the live class meetings if you've missed any of those. Um, you can also catch the weekend class meetings if you'd like, but the lectures are going to be in this lecture link here. When you click on the lecture link, you'll see all of the lectures that we went over for the course. And this is the meat of the exam, actually, right here. So, so what do we have? I have the exam in front of me. Question number one is on client-server technologies and what they include. So you want to know what client-server technologies include. And as an example, uh, you know, what are the middleware components and what are some of the, you know, traditional kinds of things that end up in a client server environment? Question number two is on distributed systems and what they contain. Um, so what components are in a distributed system? So be familiar with what some of the distributed system software, client server software. And when I say software, I mean, you know, Java components um, as well as uh, anything else that would be associated with these uh, platforms. And it's really a buzzword kind of thing, uh, trying to, you know, or terminology, I should say, trying to get familiar with or uh, being familiar with the terminology that goes along with, uh, you know, what middleware concepts are in terms of distributed, uh, distributed systems and as well as client server technologies. Uh, question number three is a true or false question. It has to do with web applications and uh, how they fit in the distributed system. So know a little bit about the web tiering. If you remember, there was a Java EE lecture that I did on web tiering towards the end of the course. In fact, we spent several weeks on web tiering. Uh, so the web tier with the uh, components that go behind the tier. Uh, and, and the concept of tiering is also important. Um, and number four is uh, also, again, on distributed systems. In fact, this is which of the following are examples of distributed systems? And you circle all that apply. Um, so you can circle more than one in that case. Uh, or you can circle just one. And one of the options says none of the above as well. So uh, also looking at and considering the concept of middleware. Question number five is on a middleware as a concept. Uh, let's see, question number six, challenges of client, server, and distributed systems. So know something a little bit about the challenges. I'd say the first couple of lectures in the course are probably good for that question. 
Uh, client server security uh, is a confidentiality, integrity, functionality, availability, knows those like buzz buzzwords and know what those things mean in terms of security as it associates with client server technologies. Uh, number eight, techniques for handling network failures. That's actually out of one of the beginning lectures as well. Uh, so knowing something about security, failures, uh, how to handle failures, uh, committing, rollbacking, stuff like that. It's covered in the beginning course lectures. I want to say lecture number one is probably a good one for that. Uh, in terms of, you know, one, one of these ones, that ones up here, probably this one. You don't have to know any Java. There's no Java questions. There's no questions about source code either. Uh, but number eight, excuse me, number nine, number eight was on uh, network failures. Number nine is on the concept of JDBC. So be familiar with JDBC. We covered that. It is not going to be a programming related question. However, it is, uh, in fact, here's the JDBC lecture here. It's not going to be uh, related to programming. Also, you will not have any questions on MySQL. You will not have any questions on Oracle either or writing SQL statements. Um, so it's just on the concepts. Lo and behold, there is also a uh, question number 10 is on RMI and RMI uh, distributed objects. So be familiar with RMI as a technology. Uh, and again, but there's no programming question, so you don't have to worry about that. I want to say RMI is probably around lecture 4-ish or 5. Uh, lecture 4 actually is the TCP UDP um, IP lectures. Uh, you want to be familiar with those as well. But RMI, uh, I want to say it was probably, uh, it's probably number 6, I'm not sure. Um, actually, let's see what the notes are. The notes are Apache, Tomcat, uh, hmm. I want to say it's, it's right around here somewhere in, in, this, in this area. There's a dedicated lecture on RMI. Uh, that's a good one. Actually, the RMI, I believe, is mixed in with the UDP, TCP, and the IEP, which is somewhere around here, four and five, which are good lectures to review. Uh, so let's see, number 11 uh, was uh, which of the following is true, and there's a bunch of stuff. This is a UDP, IP, TCP kind of question. Uh, so that covers uh, actually numbers 11 and number 12 and also number 13 and number 14 are all on IP, TCP, and UDP technologies. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four questions. That's a pretty good significant chunk of the exam. So uh, be familiar with RMI, JDBC, UDP, TCP, and IP. Uh, question number 15, the last one is on... Uh, it is an RMI question, actually. So we got two, two-ish RMIs, two-ish JDBCs, four-ish UDP TCPs, which we spent a lot of time in the course going over. So naturally, you would expect that there would be a lot of questions on that, those concepts. Um, so that actually is the bulk of the exam. It's a pretty short exam. It's only 15 questions. It might probably take you about less than an hour to complete, I would say. It's about three pages long. Um, not a hard exam, I want to say. It's all multiple choice and uh, true and false. There's no fill in the blank. There's no short answers. Um, it's one of those exams, however, where you need to think about, my advice would be to read all of the answers. Just don't pick the first one you see uh, because there might be more. So when it says circle all that apply, it means there might be more than one correct answer. And you have to find out uh, which one of those answers uh, is the most, uh, you know, which one of them are correct instead of which one is the most correct. You also have some questions that say circle one. So you want to make sure that you're reading the questions correctly. That's my best advice for acing this particular exam. And uh, again, uh, we will not be having class on Wednesday the 18th. This lecture is, uh, this recorded lecture is in lieu of that. Um, so, because I will be out of town. Uh, so, go ahead, uh, listen, uh, go, go review the lecture notes. My best advice. Uh, the second piece of advice is uh, maybe go through and review some of the recorded uh, videos on the concepts. That will also help you as well if you've missed any of the lectures uh, that we've had this week, or excuse me, this term. And um, come back and uh, you'll see under right underneath the course syllabus, you're going to see this video link. And uh, make sure you uh, know the topics that I just mentioned and you will do great on the exam. So again, the exam dates are, you can take it uh, when, when you're supposed to take it, is on Wednesday, April 25th. 
And uh, the exam will start at 10 o'clock in the morning and it will go till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I will be gone by 3 or at 3. Uh, so don't show up at 2.55 wanting to take the exam. Uh, maybe 2.30 would be, probably be the latest I'd recommend. Uh, but you can show as early as 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, you don't have to spend all this time at ITU taking the exam. It's only going to take you about an hour. But pop in between 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the 25th of April. Or you may also select the 23rd of April, which is Monday. Uh, so either one of those two days will have uh, this exam available for you. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can also send me an email message. Other than that, uh, go ahead and take this advice and prepare for the exam. And I will see you Wednesday, the 25th. Uh, thanks for listening.